Welcome to this edition of the Ultimate Combat Experience. I'm Mike Sitterman. Joining me today is Phil Henderson. We've got some big fights on slate for you. And I'm telling you, we're here at the E Center, one of the coolest venues around for fights anywhere. Uh, but we've got some big fights going on for you. Your main event features a couple guys that are college level wrestlers. And when I say college level, I'm talking all American college level wrestlers. These guys both look very, very good. Well, everyone running around here knows about Oliver Bradstreet, Mike. He's fighting tonight. He's going up against a guy, Patrick Garcia, who's a very high level wrestler. A lot of people around here don't know who he is. But this kid can wrestle and he can fight. This should be an interesting matchup. I really don't know who's going to win. He's originally from Utah, but he's been wrestling in Iowa, the mecca of uh, coll collegiate wrestling. So that's going to be a lot of fun. we got a lot of stuff before we get to that, though. It's the Ultimate Combat Experience coming right at you. Eight, seven, that were scheduled to be on the card tonight, both their opponents, no show, disappeared. But guess what? They said, hey, man, we're both here. We're both all dressed up in our gear at the weigh-ins here. Might as well get in and mix it up against one another. Who are they, Phil? Mike, we've got Jared Hatch, the younger brother of Jerome Hatch. This kid is a monster. We've only seen him fight once, but he very much impressed all of us. He's going up against the Sugar Loaf, the master of the foot stomp. And what more is there to be said about Sugar Loaf? I don't know. I tell you, these guys were on a collision course. They were bound to fight each other eventually anyway. Might as well throw it on the card tonight. Middleweight and Olds Bard, check it out. Uh, no, I'm going to beat the goat out of uh, Jared Hatch tomorrow, so it's okay. Nothing soft for me. I hope it's a good fight. I'd love to stand and trade, but he always says he'd love to stand and trade, but he always stands and goes grand. So we'll see what it does, see how we go. Knockout, baby. <laughs> yeah, I uh, seen him fight on his first fight, and he came down with his hands down. He does that with me. He's catching a right cross across his face, and he's falling. A lot of blood. I love the taste of blood. Let's get it. A couple of black eyes, broken nose. It's all right. Everyone all knows I could take a punch. He hasn't been hit yet, and we'll find out tomorrow. Wow, if there were ever a couple of knuckleheads stepping into the cage to just plain be knuckleheads, these are the two, Phil. They are some knuckleheads, Mike, <laughs> but this, this Jared Hatch kid, he has impressed us so far. No, he, when I say knucklehead, I mean guys that just, you'll, you can punch him in the head, and that's probably the safest place for them, because you'll never hurt him. Five foot nine, 205 pounds, he goes by Chow Top. Going up against the Sugarloaf tonight. What does Chow Top mean, Mike? I don't know, but it has something to do with all that hair, and he's got a lot of it. Sugarloaf testing the stability of the cage once again, as he always does. Mike Crispin, five foot seven, one eighty-five, and that's no typo, folks. Crispin was set to fight in a middleweight matchup. Chow Top was set to fight in a light heavyweight matchup. Well, they met in between, and you can tell Sugarloaf put on a little bit of weight overnight. Uh, they're probably more right around two hundred pounds. Yeah, Mike, the Sugar Loaf's one of those guys. He'll fight anyone at uh, any weight class, too. You know, those couple weight classes there, he'll bounce back and forth. And uh, here we go. Ooh. This is what we expected out of these two, and that is just fists of flying. And it was a great point there. Both these guys showed up to the weigh-ins, and their opponents didn't show up for one reason or another. And they looked at each other from across the room, got a little starry eye toward one another. And here we are, punching each other in the face in the cage. Wow, they're actually missing a lot there, Mike. they got to get their uh, timing and distance down a little bit. There was a lot of... Leather being thrown, but not a lot of leather being landed. Well, Chow Top with that hair could maybe make your depth, depth perception off just a little bit. You've seen that big mop, and you think his head's there, but it ain't. Oh, he landed a nice shot there on uh, Sugarloaf there. Yeah, I guess Sugarloaf being pasty white in this dark arena might make your depth perception be a little bit off as well. They're finding their range now, though, and it seems like they're landing with regularity, but I uh, decided, well, they promised they were going to stand and trade, and what just happened? Well, Sugarloaf took him down, and then... Uh, I think Jared Hatch grabbed the uh, grabbed the fence there, Mike. I think that was kind of an inadvertent grab, but uh, Dave safe. likes to <laughs> tell people that. He's getting my ones and twos about what's going on here and chewed out Jared Hatch. A nice uppercut by Chris Ben, followed by a nice right overhand 
uh, hook by <laughs> Hatch. And now right there, looks like Dave Sice going to take a point away for a second violation of grabbing the cage. Wow, Mike. Uh, once again, I don't think uh, Jared was being a poor sport. I just it's nerves. This at the E Center. I mean, th this is a dream come true for a lot this, of kids. This is my interpretation. If you see a guy pulling on the cage and gaining an advantage from it, then that's that's a significant foul. But if you see a guy's hands going to the cage, I don't know. I think that might have been a little quick on the point deduction. Although you can't question the judges. They're right up front there. They're seeing it go on first hand and uh, so I'm not going to question his, his judgment but right here boy <laughs> Hatch is taking some big knees. Oh that was a nice uh, little maneuver there. Sugarloaf had his head lowered and dropped a couple uh, knees to his head and then came back swinging but now they're uh, duking it out. Not the prettiest fight we've ever seen but we didn't expect a pretty fight out of these two. We expected blood and guts and that's exactly what we're seeing. Chow Top wiping his beautiful locks out of his eyes so he can see the pasty gangster stand in front of him and uh, as you mentioned man they're miss doing a lot of missing but I attribute a lot of that to you're at the East Center man Rico Rodriguez is fighting on this card this is a big deal for these guys and maybe nerves are kind of coming into play just a little bit yeah Mike I mean for a lot of people at home wherever you're at this is a dream come true to fight at the East Center I mean wow they have the oh. Olympics here oh Jared Hatch is just teeing off on the sugar loaf speaking of the Olympics right there he is knocking Pasty Gangsta back to 2002 with some of those shots right there and uh, the gangsta is smart enough to take him down and get him down onto the mat. Shuloff must not like what he sees on the feet with the uh, hatch there Mike. He's uh, taking him down uh, <laughs> two times now and uh, you know he's always complaining that oh he might be getting triangle well, here. Man I didn't think that Jared Hatch knew what a triangle I was. I don't think but he does. When you say I don't think he likes what he sees that's you mean like fists hitting him in the face. Yeah I think uh, Hatch <laughs> was scoring a little bit too much for uh, Mr. Loaf there and uh, he uh, kind of broke, well, I don't know what sure happened there, but he kind of broke his promise. He said he wanted to stand and bang. Wow, right and there was uh, a nice bang from a sugar loaf. Time to just riot as Jared Hatch stood up off the mat. He dinged him upside the head, but once again, Dave Sully's that expressed a little frustration. These guys not really getting at it toward the end of the round, but uh, if nothing else, there was a lot of action. Not a whole lot of uh, textbook action, but action nonetheless. And I think these guys, you're going to see a little bit different story as their nerves start to calm. Round two when we come back. Welcome back to the Ultimate Combat Experience. If you're just joining us, you missed kind of a frenzied first round between Jared Hatch and the Sugarloaf. Not a whole lot of pretty action, but there was a lot of action. A lot of this right here, it looks like Sugarloaf took one to the ding ding right there. Well, it looks like he did too, Mike, but uh, that first round, Hatch lost a point. And uh, I think Chrisman won that round with the takedowns. I'm, I'm not a judge, but uh, he, Jared Hatch might well, be down two rounds to nothing, but he's in a full mount here. I'll tell you what, he's making up for lost time right here, getting full mount, and there is plenty of time left in this round. Mike Chrisman is in a really bad spot. I think uh, Chrisman has to get away from uh, his vow of not training on the ground, Mike, because uh, <laughs> this should not be happening to a guy that's had this many fights by now. Well, you know, that's uh, certainly a, a, a fair assessment, no doubt about it. Chrisman being mounted, but so far doing pretty well down there, keeping things nice and tight. Uh, Jared Hatch, a little bit inexperienced, I'll grant you that he's probably not got the experience to learn how to pop up and, and get that space that he needs to drop the big bombs that he'd like to, to drop. But Chrisman's holding his own a little bit. He's holding his own a little bit, Mike, but uh, right there, I mean, that's a, that's a rookie move. You know, he rolled over, gave his back up. He didn't try and reverse. Uh, I, well, I, I the just rookie just a little bit. Well, he got up on top here. Just but. became a veteran right there. Was able to weasel out of that thing and get up on top, knee up position here, and and uh, now Jared Hatch finds himself with his opponent on his back and swinging away is Mike Chrisman. Well, Mike, this is about the time you want to put your hooks in, right? Well, you would think hooks in would be a good strategy. Well, he's got one. One Boy, these Hatch kids, they are bad. strong though, Mike. I mean, I, you know, we're talking from the announcer booth here. We're not in there against uh, one of these horses like Jared Hatch or Jerome Hatch. I mean, the Hatch brothers are strong kids. Well, that's been evident several times in this fight, but so has the lack of technical jujitsu prowess by Mike Chrisman. You pointed that out, and I really, I, I think you're right, man. You see some things that, boy, he really could improve on. He's got the, the uncoachable stuff. He's a tough kid. He's got the, the will. He's got the desire, but... You know, man, he's got to get those those that jujitsu down. Otherwise, you're not going to go very far in this game. No, you're not, Mike. You know, you see a kid like Jared Hatch coming there for his second fight. He actually looks a little more technical on the ground in his second fight. 
Well, he's, you call it his second fight. He's been around for oh, a long I time. He's second been, MMA <laughs> fight. Sanctioned MMA well, fight. Well, he's been working corners of guys for a long time. It's not like he's fresh onto the scene here, but uh, as you can see right here, cornering and fighting are two different stories. And Jared Hatch sucking some pond water on top right there. He's a little bit tired. He's a little bit tired, Mike, but I am impressed that he's pacing himself. He's not out punching himself. He's He's been around the game, as you said. You know, he's had... He's had a couple fights, probably not sanctioned, but uh, you know he knows what he's doing out there, and he's not just wailing away like another other people would see with not that many fights. I mean, well, Hatch has been in some scraps. Hatch is going to round the finish the round off on top in full mount position once again. Clearly, he made up for whatever he lost in round number one with that point deduction. You know, it's hard to say, but you, you would think Chrisman's up one round to uh, well with a deduction two to Should one. Should be up one point yeah. right now, Mike, but. Uh, um, I'm kind of shocked. I didn't expect this thing to be going in the third round at all. Well, yeah, I really kind of did. Both these guys have a lot of heart and a lot of tenacity, and, and I didn't expect either one of them to be uh, a rollover for one another. And it's such a good matchup style-wise. Neither one of them are really super adept on the ground. Neither one of them are really super great, well, pretty boxers, but they swing for the fences. They got a lot of heart, and they got good chins. Yeah, they do have a lot of heart, and they come out here and, you know, fight. Uh, Sugarloaf, Mike, this might be one of the things. Is he's fought a lot lately. He's fought probably ten times in the last two and a half months, and maybe we're seeing a little wear and tear on old Loaf. Oh, I don't, I, I don't know about that, man. <laughs> old Loaf, uh, I think he's doing all right. Uh, you know, it, it's kind of hard to, to judge, as you mentioned, from the side here, what's going on in Sugarloaf's mind. But I think he's kind of starting to grow as a fighter. He's knowing. He knows what he has to do to win a fight, and maybe he's doing just enough to win a fight. If he wins this third round, he's clearly won this fight. And, boy, it looks like now he's got the back of Jared Hatch, and, and uh, he's going to start to hammer away here. Oh, he is, Mike. He's got a hook in. He's got, Oh, he's actually got two hooks in. A little I'm high, though. Impressed. A little bit high uh, for my liking, but, you know, Jared Hatch is not doing much underneath to try to shake him off. So if he can just kind of scoot back a little bit here and uh, continue to wail away, he might, well, <laughs> he just lost it. Wow, I, I, I gotta wonder if there's something wrong with Sugarloaf's leg or something, because he had those hooks in, and well, I don't know, Hatch, Hatch is just so strong though, Mike, he just powered his way out of that, amazing. Yeah, well, that's, that's again, the, Jared, the, the Hatch brothers, you're, they're, they're so unpredictable, you never know what's gonna happen in their fights, and they really kind of bring you out of your game. You, we've seen guys that are technically very good fighters, Sandstrom to be an example, and he just looked not so technically sound when he fights a guy like uh, Jerome Hatch. So uh, it's it's kind of hard to really determine what's going on here. Yeah, Sugarloaf in the side mount here, trying to uh, rain down some elbows and uh, uh, working to get into full mount here, and he, he slides over and uh, he's got his back. And uh, well, he got a hook in, and <laughs> don't think he has the other one in yet. He's, he's getting too high on these, and he's got a hook underneath the arms. Maybe he just kind of slide him back or flatten him out here. And he's not trying to do that at all. He just gets that position and then starts pounding away. And then uh, Jared Hatch, when he gets tired of getting hit, he's, he scrambles and gets out from underneath. Well, Sugarloaf going for the choke here. He might, uh, he might finish this thing, Mike, but uh, he's going to have a hard time finding his way through all of Hatch's hair there. Yeah, you got a good point there, Sugarloaf. Happy to just kind of pound away here with, uh, I'm guessing, about a minute left in the round. Uh, boy, Sugarloaf looks like he's going to cruise his way to victory unless Jared Hatch does something big from underneath. Yeah, it looks like he is, Mike. I'd really like to see Sh flatten his opponent out here, though. Oh, Hatch get, uh, working to get on top. How strong are these Hatch kids, <laughs> Mike? I can't say it enough. These guys, they are strong. Well, and, and they're a little, they're, like I said, you know, we've said this a lot, too. They're just unpredictable. You know, Sugarloaf thought he was in a good position, and, and uh, Jared Hatch just kind of scrambled, got out. Five seconds left here in this fight. Dave Sully said, looking in to see if Jared Hatch is okay, which he is. Uh, I see no way that uh, Mike Chrisman doesn't win this fight, though. He's clearly won rounds one and two, and uh, uh, got a point taken away. Should uh, walk away with a win on this one. Yeah, I, I thought he won. I actually thought he won uh, round one, and I thought he won round Excuse me, round one and there. three, exactly. I don't see how Jared Hatch won that third round, but you know, we'll see what the judges have to say. That's why they're judges, and we're commentators. They, they, we got the judges for a reason. Uh, these guys showing a lot of regard for one another. You can tell both. The big brother's proud of uh, Jared Hatch there, and let's listen to what the judges had to say. You know, Phil, I don't know what to 
say about that. I really don't know how you could have seen a draw in that fight other than uh, he's, we're not booing fighters. We're doing with a judge's decision. I got nothing to love for both these guys, but that was just not a very good decision. Great Clips is home of the $10 haircut. Also pick up $10 UCE tickets only at participating locations. Jared Hatch for your second fight, man. That was a pretty impressive performance. What were your thoughts on the fight and the scoring? Uh, thoughts on the fight, I knew it wasn't gonna be easy. I mean, my brother fought him twice and they draw, so first time to draw, that means second time to given, right? I'm not sure. He won one. Sugarloaf won one. There was no draw. It was one to one. But uh, if you wouldn't have got the point taken away, basically all the judges would have awarded you the victory. So uh, you kind of won the fight. Nah, I was the one that made the mental mistake. I mean, put my fingers in the cage. I've been cornering for two years. I know better than that. But I guess when you're in the heat of the moment, it's stuff all changes. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot different than sitting on the couch, watching TV, watching the fight. You know that now, you've been stepping in here. You're gonna be a great fighter, man. We can already tell that. Your brother's a great fighter. I'm looking forward to seeing the Hatch brothers fight again here real soon. Like we told Mike, you put us on the same card over at Elevate. We're there, we got families. We just gotta spend some time with them, you know? Give us a break every two weeks, sounds good to me. I wanna thank my brother, kind of following in his footsteps, really. I gotta thank my family. My mom, my dad, everybody, my new girlfriend, love her to death, my little four-year-old, God bless him. All right, Jared Hatch. Celerity Investments, if you have a vision, we can assist. Go to investwithcelerity.com to find out how. Sugarloaf, honestly, with the exception of uh, Butterbean, that was probably the worst jiu-jitsu I've ever seen in a fight, actually. Well, you know I don't do jits, I just try to do it. Uh, but at your school, they got three or four jiu-jitsu programs. My advice, brother, get in there. That was a great fight, but uh, there's a draw. Are we going to do it again or what? Yeah, if he drops 20 pounds, you know, he's 20 pounds over I was. Took this fight yesterday. Uh, but, yeah, we can do it again. Sugarloaf, for the first time ever, you got fans here. They got a sign up there. The Sugarloaf Nation. For sure, they got to be out of some trailer park in West Valley. But you're getting fans. I'm excited to see you fight again, though, Sugarloaf. What's your plans for the future? I uh, just get more training, you know, step up my game a little bit, you know, more cardio, so I barely can stand up right now. All right, let's give it up for the Sugarloaf. First of all, I got to thank all my sponsors, a, a Auto Sales. If you guys need a pre-owned vehicle, go down there. Call Abbas. He'll hook you up. Also, Tattoo Land. Uh, excellent ink job you know i got my son done on my arm right here uh, they do a great job also xbomb uh, go to xbomb.com find all their merchandise right there and all my fans and friends that came out tonight i love you guys thank you well i don't understand what just happened with some judges i don't get it um that's not the way i saw it but it was a draw guess what that means we got to do it again, Mike. Yeah, exactly. We're going to do it again. We're going to get these two in here to mix it up and do it again. I assure you, uh, we got more of the Ultimate Combat. Stick around. Couple very good looking lightweights coming out here. Tyler Tucker and Eddie Pelzinski, both guys have been showing. They got what it takes to fight here in the East Center. What do you know about him, Phil? Well, Tyler Tucker was on a mission for a few years, Mike, for the LDS Church, but he came back on a vengeance and he tore up the superstar, Samson Lee. But he's going up against Eddie Pelzinski, who's three second world record holder for a knockout, Mike. Three well, seconds. Both these guys are on a tear and they're on a collision course right here at the East Center. Lightweight Knowles Bar, check it out. Actually, I took a couple weeks off to give my opponent a chance. I figure he's gonna need it, so. I, I, my only weak point right now is, uh, no, I don't think I have one. Uh, I mostly do Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Um, I've been doing more stand-up because that's kind of where my weak point in the past has been, but I'm building that up so that I, I can get to the ground. I predict that the fight is probably going to go to the ground and that's probably his best chance, so 
It'll be a ground fight. Ah, uh, well. Uh, I predict that uh, that he's going to come in fast and, and try and knock me out. And I'm going to take him down. Well, I don't know why, but I'm going to be here. I don't see this guy beat me. If he does, he's a walking weapon. You would never know that Eddie Pelzinski trains with Hank Weiss, would you? These guys have the same interviews, but let's get talking about the, ty the elder, Tyler Tucker. Kind of a soft-spoken guy. Didn't have a whole lot to say in the interviews. He's kind of a slow talker, too, Mike. Boy, he sure is. He's kind of a slow walker, too. He's just happy to be here. Five foot nine, 145 pounds out of Lehigh. Trained over there with Team Samurai X. The last time we saw this kid, very, very dominant performance. He looked really, really good, but uh, wasn't fighting the likes of lights out Eddie Pelzinski. No, he wasn't. He uh, took out the superstar Samson Lee, but uh, Hey, Pilzinski's a lot more experienced than Samson Lee is. I, I don't know if I'd agree with that. In fact, Pilzinski's only been training for less than six months. He's 5'8", 155 pounds, training at Bering Jiu-Jitsu, but he just has that, just kind of that tough ref edge around him, whereas uh, Samson Lee's been training for all his life. Yeah, Samson has been training for all his life, but uh, Eddie Pilzinski's been fighting a lot lately, so he's got a little cage experience, and uh, let's see how that goes against uh, the elder who's got the Lord on his side. Mike. A lot to be said for cage experience. You see right here, Pelzinski winging away, right, to get things started here. He's uh, all business here, landing that one-two combination, and it looks like he's got his uh, distance and spacing right off the bat. Uh, he does, Mike. He's in a front headlock here, and uh, one of the things watching on TV, or if you're at home watching this, Pelzinski hits hard. Yeah. You know, the, watching it and not watching it live, it doesn't do it justice. No, extremely, hard. extremely hard for the weight class. I mean, he he hits hard for for a light heavy, but for a lightweight, but he can really pound you. Yeah, he really can, Mike. You know, he's got he's got heavy hands. He's got ground knowledge. He's training down at Bering Jiu-Jitsu with Hank Weiss, Paul Tom, and all those guys, and uh, that's coming along with his uh, hands and his and his striking ability. Absolutely, right here, looking uh, working on a neck crank or something. He just. Uh, He's content to stay in the guard of Tyler Tucker, and I'm not sure that I would advise this because Tucker's ground is not too bad. And, uh, and Pelzinski, really, the only chance he has of really losing this fight is getting locked up in some type of submission. You can see he's physically stronger than Tucker. You can see that his stand-up is far cleaner than Tucker's, but he doesn't want to stand here in this kid's guard because this kid is dangerous. No, he doesn't, but I do know that Eddie prides himself on having a lot of ground skill. But, like you said, he's going up against Ty Tucker. He'd probably be better off standing, but uh, Pelzinski's hitting him pretty well, hard, Mike. You see right here, almost an arm lock by Tucker. He's working on it. He's taking a lot of shots, though, to try to get that. And, uh, boy, you see his face starting to swell up quite a bit. Pelzinski landed some elbows as well. And, boy, he's really starting to you feel like he's starting to put the beat down on this kid. Oh, he's landing some heavy shots, Mike. He's trying to pass the guard. Tucker's giving him a hard time getting out of the guard. But, oh, man, another big, oh, another big shot, Mike. Those are landing with him. Those hurt right there. You can see Tucker. Tucker just pretty much threw in the towel right there. Uh, you know, he, he got stung by those, and I don't think he's going to come back from them. Oh, and uh, Eddie's locking in the choke here, Mike. I think this might be all she wrote. Well, yeah, that is going to do it. There's the tap there by Tyler Tucker. He's very disappointed, but, man, he ran into a buzzsaw tonight. And we've seen Pelzinski fight in the club shows, the week shows. And it just seemed like he came out with a different fire tonight here at the East Center in front of this big crowd. And, uh, boy, you see the result of it right there. Oh, well, Tucker took a little bit of a pounding there, Mike. Uh, Pelzinski impressed again. I, I, you know, he really did. Yeah, he sure did. The legend Lonnie Foster going to give a raise of the hands right there to lights out Eddie Pelzinski. Got to feel pretty good coming into the East Center and getting a big win like that. Definitely a dominant performance for him tonight, Mike. Very dominant performance. Got bronze? Body Bronze Tanning has state-of-the-art tanning beds and home of the 30-second spray-on tan. Eddie, that was a very dominating performance tonight, man. What were your thoughts on the fight, though? Well, I don't have too much thought. You guys seen it. I pictured Phil Henderson's face, and I did my job. Oh. I'm just going to run out of the cage now. All right, Eddie, what's the plans for you in the future, man? Well, I look to take the 155 weight class. I train with some of the toughest guys in this game. I want to thank my beautiful wife for coming to watch me. I want to thank all my grappling buddies. I want to thank the fans. You guys make noise. It's so much better for the fighters. Make some noise, please.
Well, it was no three-second knockout, but Eddie Pelzinski did a little wrecking tonight. He really did, Mike. I think Eddie's, you know, he's had a couple ups and downs, not too down in the UCE, but he showed tonight what he's all about, and that was just, he wrecked that kid. Tyler Tucker is no joke, and uh, Eddie Pelzinski showed that he is the class in the 155-pound weight class here in Utah. We're going to be looking forward to seeing a lot more of him. we got more of the Ultimate Combat. Stick around.